Good morning. Morning. Get my earbud in here. What's up, Nicole? What's up? We've How's got Kaylin and Sandra joining us and 20-something right. other people. Morning, everyone. That's some fun. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, Nicole broke my light. Before. Stop it. My battery died on mine. It'll turn on for like 30 seconds and then it's going to shut off within a couple of minutes. <laughs> and I didn't. I knocked it over and I honestly think he has to change the batteries on his too. It's fine. Yeah. I'm trying to get it to work. I think, man. I, think I just have it. to charge mine. Stop it. <laughs> I'm like looking online for another one for you right now. You're fine. It's okay. How's everybody doing? I was sick again last week. It was terrible. It was a stomach bug again. Comment if you've gotten the stomach bug. It is terrible. Terrible, terrible. Morning, Tiffany. Hey, Tiffany. To read, man, I you love guys, it. You guys are used to the fact that he gets sick. And yeah, cool. shout out to the streets department. Awesome. That's awesome. That's true. So that's the whole point of us having the app is for people to be able to reach out and put in tickets on issues that are yeah. right then and there. It's very convenient, so it's a great app. If you haven't downloaded it, we'll talk about it here shortly. Right? We have some slides, right, Nicole? We do. We have some new slides. Oh, new slides. Cool. I, I love creating new stuff to show. How's your week going, Nicole? Is it going it's good? good. I love it. I'm yeah. always, you know, always ready for a new week. It's so, new Nicole, week. so Nicole does a lot of our video editing, so all the cool videos that we have coming out as of recently, Stop. Nicole is behind those, so... <laughs> Uh, keep checking out our social media channels and continue to follow us on Facebook. Hey, Melissa, how's it going? Hey, Don, how's it going? Hey, Deborah. Hey, Deborah. Cool. So we got the chamber here watching today. Let's get started. You ready to get yeah, started? Yeah, let's go. All right. All right. Let's see here. All righty. You want me to start off, Nicole? I'll let, yeah, I'll let you take it this time. We're being unplanned today. We're just going to roll with the punches. So resources. So uh, we show this slide each show. Uh, make sure we're not on mute. Um, city website, weatherfortx.gov. That is the link to where you can get meeting agendas. Uh, you can watch old meetings, council, planning and zoning, building and standards, parks, board, all, all of the boards and commissions, including council, are archived and they stream live on our website. Um, so you can always be in the loop of what's going on in regard to city business and, and development in Weatherford. Uh, WeatherfordTX.gov is sort of our hub, our main website, followed by our tourism website, experienceweatherford.com. Um, and I'm glad the Chamber's watching because uh, the Chamber serves as our uh, Visitors Bureau, uh, Tammy Gazzola, 
uh, kind of oversees everyone in the chamber and kind of leads that group. So they do a great job. They just had Peach Festival, which was another huge successful year for them. So congratulations to them. Uh, but they really help us spread the message about experience, weatherford.com, uh, um, our tourism brand. Uh, economic development, choose weatherford.com so you can get information about uh, economic development. That website's mainly for uh, businesses looking to come to Weatherford or developers as well. And then, of course, we have our downtown website, Heritage Square, weatherford.com in regard to that project. Oh, and not to mention um, all of our social media platforms that we're on, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. And I don't have Nextdoor on there, but we do have a Nextdoor. Yes, we are on Nextdoor as well. Okay, Nicole, you want to talk about this? Yeah, so we always talk about the My Weatherford app, which you guys literally, if you go back in the comments, you can see Teresa's testimonial of what the tickets do in My Weatherford. But... If you didn't know, you can actually watch all of our meetings, like utility board, city council, any of those. You can actually watch them live from our website and from the My Weatherford app. So if you go to the website, you can go to like search on the website live meetings and it'll pull up a page where you can actually select and then there's an archive. So if you scroll down to the bottom, it has it broken up by type of meeting. So city council, for example. It has the notes and agendas and the videos or audio from all of them on there. So you can actually watch it live or you can go back and watch it again. But just kind of letting you know that no matter where you're at, so if you're traveling or maybe you can't get away from home because you got to watch the kids or something, it, we have all of the meetings at your fingertips as well. Yep. It's a great resource. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a busy world we live in uh, with work and families and other uh, volunteer work that we do, it's hard to make all of our um, meetings, and we understand that. So it's provided um, on our website. Uh, we're streaming the council meetings, uh, which we have a slide about that, uh, live on uh, Facebook. Uh, so we'll be live tonight on Facebook as well for city council. Um, here is another app that we have for tourism experience Weatherford. That's, that's a free app. You can download that through Google or the app store. And Nicole uh, recently was able to work with our mobile app provider um, and you can actually do the the historical downtown walking tour from your phone so you don't need like the paper brochure you can just download um, that app it's all digital and you can actually uh, go on that tour now here in Weatherford which is super cool um, I've got to try that out. Have you tried it yet? Nicole? I haven't tried it, but I did play around with it yesterday just sitting here. And I know that you can either add the entire tour or you can add specific places you want to go on, or awesome. you can download the tour and just take a couple of places off. It's pretty customizable. I'm kind of hoping at some point I'll have time to develop some more tours throughout town. But right now we have that one on there. So I think that's a cool feature and, we need to be pushing right now. And it's tied to your GPS. So it kind of guides you. Along, yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. So yeah. it's like, super cool. Um, and uh, we're excited about that. And like Nicole said, she's going to add, we'll be adding more uh, tours down the road. So council meeting tonight at 6.30, uh, a, few agenda, a few agenda items. Uh, the mayor uh, will authorize and execute an interlocal agreement with Parker County for road maintenance, repairs, and construction. Um, and then there will be a presentation from Chief Lance Arnold, Arnold at the police department in regard to crime prevention through environmental design. Um, so it'll be a good meeting. Uh, you can see the full agenda at the link below, uh, which ties you back to weatherfortx.gov as well. And as I mentioned, we will be live streaming on our Facebook page. You can also watch uh, that on Spectrum Channel 190 uh, cable channel as well. Um, and so this is our council, and you will see them tonight along with staff uh, discussing city business. Um, so be sure to check that out. Uh, we try to make it as convenient as we can for everyone to catch those meetings. And if you prefer not to watch via social media, again, you can go to weatherfortx.gov and watch the meeting live there as well. Good stuff. Oh, this is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I was so excited about this. They actually did a really cool promotional video. They're like on a swing. I don't know if everybody saw that, like at one of our parks. And they're like smack talking each other. But it's Battle of the Badges. They do this every year. It's between the fire chief and the police chief um, to basically um, – it's a blood drive. So whoever gets 
like when you go to donate blood, you say it's I'm doing it as part of the police team or the fire department team. I can't remember who won. So wow. PD won the first year and fire won last year. So it's the third annual. And I think it's pretty cool because this is the time of year that usually the blood banks are running really low. Yeah. So it's just our way to kind of have a little friendly competition between two departments and, but also like give back to the community and make sure there's enough blood in case of emergencies, which happen daily and just in different people's lives. So yeah, when you donate blood, they'll give you a little slip after, if you go to one of these places, they'll give you a little slip and you can vote for whichever one you want to vote for. So, okay. Who do you, your prediction, Nicole, who is going to win blood drive? You can't ask me that. That's like picking a favorite. What? I'm putting you on the spot. Who is going to win the blood drive, Nicole? Is this purely based off of question, though? Is this purely based off of who's marketing it more? Or is this based off of who has talked the most smack? Both. Because there's one department that has definitely talked about it more uh-huh. on their social media. And okay. there's one department that I think has has the most, like, talk that i've heard so so councilman cleveland commented hope to see you guys this evening so he's watching so councilman if you have a prediction put it in the comment i'm putting you on the spot too i know he's <laughs> laughing right now Nicole. so well, i i mean i'll pay i'll tell you which one i think but i think you should go first I, if you're gonna put me on the spot you have to say which one you think is gonna win you know this is tough this is, see well, I'm not sure that, see it's tough yeah but and Chief Rust, he's not going to like this. He's not going to like it. But I, I think the PD is going to take it this year. I have a feeling. I mean, I will say I have asked several police officers when I've run into them around town and at work functions. A lot of them will be showing up. And when I've asked the firemen, I have uh-huh. not received all of those same answers. Uh oh. So that might have been my pool. But Chief <laughs> Rust is watching. Don't be mad because I'm still thinking you guys could pull it out. So it's totally up to whether you guys show up or not. So Councilman Cleveland put Tiffany says tie. <laughs> Much- tie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, God has a question. What is the latest on the low cost housing committee? I've not found anything on that. I mean, you see resources under the committee started in January, but nothing since then. So John, basically uh, if you haven't seen anything, they haven't come to any uh, conclusions yet. So they're still working on that. So uh, as soon as that information is available, obviously we'll get that out there. So uh it takes a little bit of time, a little bit slow process, make sure that they get it right, I'm sure. So uh, we have not been given information uh, from the communications and marketing department, but I'm sure we will when, once that concludes. <laughs> so Councilman Cleveland said he'll take whichever side. Uh, I don't. So he's, he's saying the fire department, it sounds like. Well, and I wanted to pick fire just based off of the fact that you picked PD, but I mean, well, I'm kind of uh, hoping you guys prove me wrong. Let's Let's see who all shows up. Chief Rust gives me a hard time all the time. So that's, I, that's true. It's true. So anyways, I hope they're both watching. It's all in good fun. So I think it'll be a good competition. I think no matter who wins the Battle of the Badgers, the community's going to win. So That's right. Everybody wins. All right. Moving on. That was fun. <laughs> you still you, – you predicted p- police, I think, though, right, Nicole? I did. <laughs> I'm like slightly second guessing it now, but like, I mean, yeah. prove me wrong or prove me right. They're going to be so mad at us. I just, yeah. I just want to see the, like the biggest turnout ever. And this isn't just from, know, this is from spouses and community members. So actually, yeah, let's issue a challenge for anyone who watches any of our shows, whether you're watching live or later, uh-huh. show up for one of the blood drive locations. They're posted they here. They're going to be on Experience Weatherford soon. So show up. Yeah. But you're... I, I don't know how to finish that because it's a really weird thing to talk <laughs> I don't about. Know where I was going to say put your money where your mouth is, but it's not a money donation. So you guys show up and give back to the community. Make sure the blood supply stays high, and then vote for whichever department yeah. you want to win. And have fun. It'll be fun. Yeah, right. it'll be great. It's settled. Uh, brush collection uh, quadrant four uh, this week, right, Nicole? Yes. All right, and so um, if you're in that area, uh, be sure to get your your brush on the curb, and then um, that changes um, each week. Um, so just always follow that. You can also find that information under the sanitation page on weatherfortx.gov. So, um, oh, Councilman Cleveland, he challenged me. Do we need to schedule yes. the same time to donate? Y- yes, I agree. I think we should. We should Facebook Live that too. 
We will be out for a little bit of the time. It runs for five days, so I won't be out there all five days, but we'll be there for a little bit. Yeah. And we'll definitely go live. Yeah. All right. Moving on. Uh, you want to cover this one, Nicole? Sure. Let's go for it. So we've got a water department update, guys. What up? Okay. So the North Main Street project, contractors oh. paving between 4th and 5th Street today, and then they'll start with sewer replacement on 5th and 6th Street. Um, and that's if they hadn't already finished that yesterday. Contractor intends to start replacing the water line in two and a half, two to two and a half weeks, starting at Front Street. And then they had originally planned at starting the water replacement as the sewer progressed to 4th Street, but they're kind of delaying the start of that work until the sewer is nearly complete. And that's for traffic flow. That's just for getting the project done the most efficient and the best way possible. Uh, then for Mockingbird Lane and West Park Street, they will finish paving along Mockingbird and West Park, South Waco, and West Rents Street. Then over on Ackard Street in the 200 block and Sloan Street, they should uh, finish replacing the sewer in the 200 block of Ackard Street. And I think this was an update from yesterday, so that's my bad that I didn't update the verbiage. And then they'll shift over to Sloan Street to replace the sewer there. Once that sewer is finished, uh, the crews will then replace the water pipelines on both Ackard and Sloan. So, you guys, that's your really quick water department update. And someone mentioned in the comments uh, to give shout outs to the contractors that that uh, win the bids for some of these projects. And I just want to say that the contractors do a really good, dro good job. Um, and I had heard uh, the North Main project. People are very pleased with how that's going and how quickly it's going. So, yeah, giving a shout out to the contractors that, that um, are awarded the bids for some of these projects uh, that helps the city move forward with and, and move forward quickly too. So uh, shout out to them. All right. Water. And that's gonna continue water. Okay, so phase <laughs> one improvements. I wasn't sure if he was gonna no, you good. guys. Um, at the water treatment plant are in process to improve, actually they're recently completed, um, to improve the taste and odor of our water and phase two is in design. And, uh, and that's for the complete taste and odor solution. We operate here in Weatherford and maintain a 14 million gallon per day water treatment plant. We have nine water towers and 280 miles of pipeline. And a, we have an additional water tower in design phase and that should go in near Bowie Drive. In the event of an emergency, our staff has the goal to respond within 30 minutes and be on site. And that is a 24 seven goal that we have. And so water quality, we do meet all regulatory requirements for safe drinking water, but our existing system was not very effective at removing those taste and odor compounds. And that challenge was caused by geosmin in our water sources, which happens when algae, which is naturally occurring, dies off. And that happens when it gets really hot and really cold. So summer and winter, and that just naturally occurs. So that can spike during those times. Again, it's not a regulatory issue, but we do know that it is a taste and odor issue. So what is our solution for that? The first project is to replace part of our existing filter media with granular activated carbon or GAC. It will result in 20% reduction of taste and odor compounds. It was recently completed. It cost approximately $220,000. Our second project is more difficult and it's actually adding new GAC contactors at the water treatment facility. It will be completed early 2021 should reduce taste and odor compounds by over 90% and cost approximately $5 million. We don't have exact dates and that's the same with most of our projects. If you've been in construction or around that, you understand that weather and all these other things can come up and slow or speed up a project. So we just have these estimated dates for you guys. And I wanna mention, I think it was an article that was in the Weather for Democrat uh, recently, I believe it was in the, in the paper. Um, but they had interviewed or asked some citizens and I, some citizens have noticed a difference, even with that first uh, project being complete, um, they have noticed a difference in, in the taste and odor, uh, which is good. So that means that it's working. And um, once phase two is complete, we'll see even more improvement. I will say we've gotten a lot of positive feedback on social media and I have in person too. It's changed drastically. So I know that since 2017, when our study was done, I mean, yeah, it's a world of difference, but also understand that if you live 
in certain areas, we do have 280 miles of pipeline that it will take a little bit for those initial steps to make its way to everyone's houses. So some of the people that are seeing faster results, it might be newer pipeline. It might be that they live closer to where the GACs went in. It just, it's all these different factors that go in. But I do know that people that really had big issues with it have had complete turnarounds with the new stuff. And of course, by 2021, it will be 90% yep. better than it was in 2017, if not more than that. Yeah. So that takes us into the North Main Street project, which is a water and sewer line project, which we kind of gave a little bit brief overview of earlier. It's replacing the water and sewer lines that are upwards of 70 years old and prone to needing repairs. We put out the barriers April 15th and work began that week. It should last about eight months. Work zone between Front Street and 8th Street, taking it one block at a time. Um, so we are asking that if you're going during peak traffic, seek alternative routes. We've got Rick Williamson Memorial Highway, Franklin Brazo Street, Elm Street, and Rusk Street. So you guys just kind of check out some of those other ways to avoid maybe peak traffic. So morning, lunch, and afternoon. Uh, so there's two phases. There's the phase one, which is we're already in process, which is the sewer line. It's the closure of the middle turning lane and center lanes in both directions. Then we're going to come back with phase two with the water line. It will be the closer of the outside lanes in both directions. So check, uh, and I, it's still written wrong on there, but it is the closer of both outside lanes. So coming into and going away from town, check www.weatherfordtx.gov slash engineering slash current projects to stay up to date on this project and others. We post updates to construction schedule and all of that there. So we have the construction schedule, but that one hasn't been updated since the water line is pushed back a little bit. Um, but we do on the next slide have what the two closing lanes will look like. So left side of the screen is what we have now. The right side of the screen is what it will look like when they're replacing the water lines. And this is a picture I have from July 9th of what was going on back then. Yeah. All right. And I, you know, I always enjoy those updates, Nicole, because um, I think people enjoy that because, like I said, that's that, pro that that's the project that's gone so smoothly. Uh, and, and honestly, we were we we were worried about it because it's North Main. We know it's a busy area, so we've done our best to get information out there to, to everyone. And um, so far, it's the contractors moving along, and and uh, the results have been very good. And so, looking forward to to getting that complete when the time is right and uh, life can go on. But so far it's been a really good process to change out those lines. Yeah. All right. So the electric department, here's their updates for the, the week. Um, Storm siren project. Uh, this is news to me. I didn't know that. I guess they'll be installing poles this week. Um, it was not aware of that, but that doesn't mean that they will be uh, installed uh, or the, the project will be complete. Um, it's just installing poles to prepare when that happens. Uh, electric feeder construction, White Settlement Road from Lake Weatherford substation to Oak Ridge. That's in the design phase. Uh, another electric feeder on Rick Williamson from Peaster Highway to the railroad overpass. That's in progress. Uh, customer web order, portal uh, for electric water and wastewater billing. That's in progress right now. So they're working on more uh, customer friendly services. That way you can go in and um, pay your bill more easily, uh, see your usage and so forth. The West Loop substation landscaping project, that is in progress. And uh, the cost of service and rate study for electric water, wastewater, and fiber, fiber uh, they are presenting cost of service results at utility board meeting uh, on Thursday. So that's this Thursday. Um, so that'll be interesting if you want to check that out. That will be streamed live, uh, not on social media, but that will be streamed live on our website. Animal shelter update. So Nicole went to this event. And, uh, and basically, so, hey, clear the shelter, which is the full, first bullet point, Blake. Yeah. So August yes. 17th, you guys, they're waiving adoption fees. It doesn't mean there won't be other fees, but the adoption fee is waived. You guys come help us clear the shelter. I think it'd be great. So Second, one, quick, one quick fact about that, that I think is so cool. Uh, when that started, I believe it was Irving kind of started the clear the shelter program and, and the city of Weatherford kind of jumped on board with them. So it was like us and, and Irving. Um, and then like it has gone nationwide, um, which is really, really cool. I think that's says a lot for um, how progressive um, our animal shelter is with trying new things and trying new programs. 
uh, and Dustin Dill, who's in that picture at the bottom left. That's Dustin Dill, who oversees the animal shelter, along with Ashley Woolno, who's in the middle in the plaid dress. Um, they do a really good job over at the animal shelter, along with all the other numerous staff. And I know I'm forgetting a couple names, but uh, they all do a great job. Um, and they raise money for, I'll let you talk about it since you went. Yeah, so it was actually, if you've heard of the Parker County Today's charity thing that they do, they do bachelors and then they do bachelorettes every year. They usually have five. This year they had four bachelors. But so for bachelor of the year, we had Matt Tomlin and he was with the animal shelter. They were partnered with a local business. So they basically were given eight weeks to fundraise so they can throw events. They can ask for donations it is what it is. They have eight weeks and the winner is the person who fundraises the most. So actually our capital project, um, is a big thing that we've been pushing to help build the new facility, which would have the new surgery center, new facilities to better service all the animals. I mean, the animal shelter has a giant area that they cater to in the county and beyond. So, of course, we always want to do our best and put our best foot forward. So they actually won first place by fundraising the most amount. So we were really excited. It was really fun. I'm really thankful that they invited me to go with them. So I was able to grab a couple pictures for them. But yeah, I thought it was pretty cool. And we're always excited to see new things coming up. So then I, because why not, if we're gonna talk about the animal shelter, show some of the animals they have for adoption. So in the top left corner, we have Oreo. He's a male dog. He is currently ready for adoption. Then next to him on the right, we have Charlie, who is a male cat and he's so cute. Below Charlie, we have Binks, who is a female cat. And then to the left of Binks, we have Nina, who is a female dog. Guys, these are just a few of the animals. You can always go to our website and then go to the animal shelter page and scroll down and see the live adoption. And it'll give you everyone who's up for adoption currently, like ready, you could take home today. And it gives you any animals that maybe are needing some more vaccines or that they're in the waiting phase. So if you see an animal, it, we give as much information as we have. You guys check it out. It's a quick and easy way. Nothing beats going and meeting the animals in person, but maybe check it out before there. It's also great for if you've lost your pet to see if maybe someone turned them into the shelter or if they were picked up. We have so many great resources. You guys check it out. All right. So the library, they have their summer reading challenge. Uh, they have 29,466 hours logged so far uh, for that reading challenge. Uh, there's over 1,600 people who are registered from children to adults, uh, which is really great. Um, and their attendance last week was 445 people. So uh, they do the summer reading challenge every year. Um, of course, everything that they do uh, is free. And so it's a really good program and uh, definitely try to get involved with that if you haven't done so uh, already. So then HR update. We've got a couple, we have multiple positions open, but I went and asked HR, hey, what are the two positions? If I was going to talk about them on the live show, what are two positions you guys would want? So our, we have the director of finance open, we have a building inspector open over in development neighborhood services. But if you wanna learn more about those jobs, the requirements, all that stuff, or any jobs we have open across the city, if you go to uh, www.weatherfordtx.gov slash jobs. That's always updated. And the other option is if you don't want to fill out an application online, we always have those posted outside our HR offices here in City Hall. Yes. And, you know, I hate the word jobs because I really feel like a lot of our, you know, all of our jobs are, are definitely careers for people. Um, so if you want a career at the City of Weatherford, be sure to check out the human resources page at weatherfordtx.gov. Uh, like, like Nicole said, we have a director of finance position that's open right now, a building inspector, and these are really good professions and really good careers. Um, you know, one thing that, that I love about um, my work here at the City of Weatherford is that we get to make a difference in the community. Uh, we get to help people. Uh, we don't always get it right. <laughs> we may not always have the information from our department, but we try our best. And so it's a really great career uh, here, and I love getting to meet uh, people out in the community. Uh, I absolutely love meeting people uh, on the live show when, when you all comment. And so it's a really great opportunity to, to make a difference. And um, I think that if you really want to make a difference and be involved in something bigger than yourself, uh, then come apply here at the city of Weatherford. And uh, I sound like a, like a, a public service announcement or a commercial, but it's true. Um, 
but I've worked at other organizations and I plan to retire with the city of Weatherford. I love it here. Um, it's a great opportunity. We have a lot of fun. Uh, even though it's 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 local government, we do have a lot of fun. I think a lot of people stereotype government as boring sitting behind a desk, but as you can tell, we do have a lot of fun and uh, enjoy our work. And I know all of the other apartments and staff enjoy their their line of work as well. So always check out our job op- or career opportunities uh, and see what we have to offer. And uh, hopefully, you'll get to come work with us one day. I think it's interesting that you brought that up that most people think it's boring. I honestly thought that and I figured I'll just try for the job. If I get it, I get it. (laughs) But I actually love it. And one thing that I've, I've, kind of probably sound like a walking PSA for the city of Weatherford, but we're service driven. So it's, we're not politically driven. We're not out there to scam anyone or anything. We're out here to provide a service and to best help all of our residents the best way we can and all of the businesses. So that's what we're here for. So honestly, I feel like everyone I've met that works for the city, they're the most on like honest and genuine people I've ever met. It's just, it's, I honestly like having worked in other areas and with other companies, it's, it's the best thing working here. I love it. Everyone is so kind and so welcoming and everyone takes such pride in everything they do. Um, So yeah, I think you guys, if you're looking for, like Blake said, I know the, I know the URL says jobs, but yeah, it's a career, but it's also finding your like your work family. So your friends and family. Well, and one of the things is uh, at the beginning of our show, like the first person to comment, uh, we called her. Her name is uh, Sandra Green. We called that her Mama, Mama Green. Mama Green is what we call her. But she retired like two weeks or a week ago. And so um, and I hated it because that's when I was out sick and we had they had her retirement party. And I'm sorry if you're still watching, Sandra. I couldn't make it. Uh, obviously, I was sick. Um uh, But no, like the fact that she still stays in touch with us and watches our live shows to know what's going on, that says a lot about her time here at the city of Weatherford. And so we miss her um, and she was great. And so it just speaks volumes for, you know, how close we become working here at the city of Weatherford. So, um, all right. PSA over, right, Nicole? Uh, Yeah, I guess we'll end that PSA. (laughs) Should we cry now? (laughs) I mean, I teared up a little bit. So I feel like that, like hit that level for us already. (laughs) Okay. All right. So next next week. week. So we run off of a, if you watch regularly, we, every week that there is a city council meeting. So the second and fourth week we do what I call departments and government. So we cover what's going on in city council, what's going on in our different departments, different programs we offer, all of that fun stuff. And then the first and third weeks, we cover economic development. So like what's coming to town, where our business is at and their applications and all of those things. So then every now and then we get a bonus week, which is a fifth Tuesday week, which is always exciting. Um, so we get to cover anything really. So Blake and I were talking about it this morning. We're kind of going to do a Q and a, we're going to find some fun stuff to fill in in case people aren't asking questions because Lord knows every time we count on everyone asking a lot of questions, those are the shows that we don't get any questions, but (laughs) If you have questions already, like send them in. We'll find out the information. We'll get you as much information as we can and be ready to go for that show. Otherwise, tune in between like 11 and 1130 because that's about how long our shows usually run and ask questions and we'll go ahead and knock them out while we can. And if we don't know the answer, we'll do what we always do, which is find out the answer and get back to you. Um, Comments. Brenda asked, uh, are we getting a Bucky's? Um, No. No. The best thing that you could do is contact them and let them know that you would love to have them in Weatherford. We would love to have them here. We love new businesses that are interested in coming, interested in coming to Weatherford. So Brenda, I hope that answers your question. Um, Justin, I heard it is going in at Hudson Oaks. Have not heard that, Justin. That's rumor as well. Uh, We might need to add that to our rumor control, Nicole. Well, so I've added (laughs) to our rumor control a lot, but there's only so many things I can have going on in our rumor control. And because I've heard so many, I ask, like, and honestly, if you guys hear them, send us a message, let us know, or we'll add them to rumor control. Yeah, for sure. So, all right, moving on. This is where we are located, City Hall, 303 Palo Pinto Street. This is where Nicole and I live during the day between 8 to whenever they let us go, right, Nicole? Yeah. <laughs> so we'll be here tonight until, like, I don't know, probably 9 o'clock or so. So we'll be here all day today having fun. And uh, all the than- councilmen who are watching <clears throat> will also be here. <laughs> all right. Well, we'll see everyone. Um Tonight, if you come to City Hall, uh, and then we will be um, 
Sorry, I was reading comments. Faye. Yeah, I was gonna say, no. Faye. Yeah, rumor, we, we, we don't do rumor control on the weeks that we cover government and stuff. I used to do Weatherford fun facts, but I'm not gonna do them if we have other things to cover. But yeah. rumor control is only for economic development weeks. Yeah, so rumor control will be back in two weeks. Yes, two weeks. Yeah, we could add some next week if we wanted. We or, might. We might. We'll see. <laughs> You're like, no. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> All right, so uh, that's where we're located at City Hall tonight. City Council meeting. Tune in live uh, weatherfordtx.gov if you would prefer to watch it off our website or the meeting. You can watch on Facebook uh, via social media. So, yeah, you're welcome. Uh, see you there, Councilman Cleveland. Um, all right, we're trying to catch up on all the comments here. Cool. Um, all right. Yeah, cool. All right, we'll see y'all next week, same time, same place. In the meantime. Take it easy out there.